I'm going to try my hand at a process video today. I've chosen this sketch from Let's Get Sketchy. Um, it's from their May Week 1 sketch. And I kind of went through a stack of photos that I have printed out from our Florida trip. And believe me, that's not even the bulk of them. I took like 1,200 photos on this trip. Um, anyway, I chose these three photos of my grandson Cameron, you know, hanging out. We always stayed in a room that had like a sofa bed um, in the room. And... Um, he would be laying there schnoozing every day. So I'm going to cut these down to kind of sort of match this. I don't think I'm going to have them, you know, really, really small, but it's not going to be exactly like that sketch, but we'll see when I get a little bit closer. I think right now I'm cutting them down to about three and a half by five. Creatively cropping here. So this is my first ever process video. I don't know how well it's going to turn out. I don't know all there is to know about making videos and I'm trying to improve my process and the more I see other people do videos, the more I think I can do that. <laughs> I may be sadly mistaken, but I want to give it a shot anyway. It's one of those things when I get done with grad school, I'm going to apply to design teams like crazy and you know, try and get better at this whole process and okay let's see that is still yeah let me see if I can trim off let me see if I can make these three by five and I got these printed at um, Walgreens before I went on my retreat in May the first part of May and so they have that really shiny um, appearance instead of a matte finish. When I print at home or order them through Snapfish, I always get the matte like these. I just printed at home. I was thinking about doing these, but they're just not the right ones for this layout because they're different views. Um, anyway, so I printed out a ton of photographs to take with me. And I didn't use um, hardly any of them, it seems like. Let's do that. Okay. And I won't say I'm the quickest scrapbooker, but I won't say I'm the slowest either. And I've got all these little scraps over here. Let me see what I can use because there's some strips down the side. Oh, that's not the right size. There's some strips down the side. And I would very much like to use what I have already. Oh, that's kind of cool looking. I don't know what I keep picking up here. Little bits of paper, I guess, maybe. Oh, that's good. You just can't hardly see it. But if I do it like that, I can. And I think I have another ye long yellow strip. Not that short. Not that short. Okay, so I don't have another long yellow strip. Hmm. Well, how about the layout? Has it looking a little bit like that? I'm just going to kind of rifle through these papers that I have. Uh, my partial sheets of paper that I have left over. I kind of would like to use what I have that's um, already cut down, but I have lots of pinks in this kit. I think I've used up. Oh, look at that. That's the cover, and I think Oh, but that's florally. It's kind of girly looking. He might be a little upset if I do girly stuff. And that's got tape on it. I'll use that to punch some patterns later for another layout. A challenge I saw, but that's not bad. Not with that. And I'm not necessarily loving that green. <clears throat> This is my last whole pattern sheet of paper, so I don't 
I'm not going to use it if I don't cut it up. Let's do just two strips off of here. And I will cut this down to make it look like they're all stuck together, maybe. inch off of that one. Oh, did I cut too much? Probably. So let me lift this up. I really want to add in some other colors. Let me root around in my box of papers again. These, that's going to add some color. Let me cut off another strip of these. And this one is the back of this cut apart. And I think I would rather cut this side off. Because I really like that. One, one day we will laugh about it. And I also like that Enjoy the Everyday. I like them all. I'll just cut this strip off down this side. There's like, I don't know if everybody sees it, but it, I kind of see like an area. And I think it's probably following, well, it's pretty close to the front. As you can see, when I cut that off down that one strip, it kind of overlapped just a bit. So I think I want these to go back in. Um, behind that instead of that dark paper. I don't know, maybe that dark paper and this one instead of the chevron paper. Make that the background one and then that other one. I kind of like to keep my sketch where I can see it a little bit. Let me just work this a little bit here. And this one coming down, let me make this about a half inch off. I still think I like that chevron better. I may not like it so well with these, like that. You can see that color through there, so I kind of like that. Just not crazy about that one. I like that. That's better. I'm just looking through my border strips now, what I have left as far as border strips go. I have... Well, that one I've kind of chopped up. I have that. That's kind of girly. That one's not bad. I've chopped that one. And I have all of these, and I can color these any color I want. So, let's see. I'm not really seeing anything that I'm just loving. Maybe. Those the same size? Yeah. Yeah. I like the one with the larger scallop. And I think I actually still have um, a sticker one as well. Let me look on my sticker sheet that I think that is on. 
There might be a couple of them on there for all I know. Kind of rifled around through this kit a lot, and I've used a ton, ton, ton of of um, supplies from it. But I still have plenty. It's not the right color. That's too girly. I'm just pulling out some of these that still have stickers left on them. So I have this one with the um, what do you call that? The element chart, this bright green one, this one that is uh, the graph, a very small scallop, and then I have these two and this one, which I think would probably work over here, especially with the black. And these ones may work too over here with the black carrying it over. But I think to tie this together, I think as this kit is getting smaller and smaller, I'm finding the need to ink um, the pattern papers more and more. Um, that I put down because I just feel like sometimes they feel a little bit mismatched and I think this helps pull everything together. And I know there's a lot of other uh, people out there who create scrapbook pages who ink edges or who uh, draw um, lines around the edges. <clears throat> And I do that on occasion as well. Um, I'm not very good at it, so I don't do it a whole heck of a lot. And let's see. I don't know if I want to keep this the same color. If I want to keep it white or let me ink this. This is kind of giving me, it reminds me of something Nicole Jones says. If she's uh, stuck on something, she will come back to it in just a little while, move on to something else. And um, anyway, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of moving forward and inking some other edges while I think about what I want to do with that. If I want to color it or if I want to just leave it as is. Or maybe use one of the other elements. Because I think on the one sticker with the smaller scallop, it has um, a blue um, outline. The grid is uh, blue. And so it's like a notebook paper blue. And so I'm thinking that might actually tie in better with the blues that are, that are in there as opposed. I know there's white and white here. And this kind of has a creamy texture. And this one kind of has a creamy texture. So I'm kind of toying with the idea of coloring this something that has a more creamy texture, but then I think that stark white will stand out too much. So I really need to have some stark white in there as well as far as embellishments or stickers go, but I don't know if it needs to be the border strip or not. And I put in too much thought into this. <laughs> I probably am, but... I guess that's all right. And let's see, the sketch has this kind of womper jawed. Oh, let me put this other piece over here down first. I'm kind of give it. Maybe it's not quite the same distance. About close enough, I think. So today, um, it's a pretty big day around here. Um, not in the fact that, um, you know, anything spectacular is going on. Uh, this time last year, my brother passed away. And so, um, it's kind of been a bittersweet day. I, he died on Memorial Day last year, so I'm thinking Memorial Day is always going to hit pretty hard for my family. I kind of, I had my kids here yesterday and, and kind of, well, my youngest son and his daughter were here, and then my niece came over with her husband and kids and spent some time with my husband and I. And I'm thinking that, you know, this time of the year is just going to be a little bit sad for us. Um, 
and I felt like most of today I spent um, just kind of being a little bit cathartic and thinking about some of the things, you know, about my brother and his life and things that could have been different, I wish would have been different, but really and truly, I don't know that I could have made such a huge difference. You know, you think things sometimes, oh, well, you know, if I had done this differently and if I had done that differently or if I had done the other differently, things would have turned out different. But I'm at a point now where, you know, I've done all that second guessing and today was really about just living through the day, accepting the moment, trying not to cry, um, which I've done a little bit of. And I don't think crying is a bad thing, but the first probably four months after he died, that's all I did was cry. I think I used up all the water in my body at that time from just crying. And so, I mean, I would cry over anything. I would cry at a stoplight. I would, you know, cry at just whatever. And so um, I'm trying not to let myself go like that emotionally. Um, anymore and I you know like I said I don't think crying is a bad thing it's just I was just too much of an emotional wreck and I think I've got a better handle on it and I really my faith has really increased this year and I think that's helped more than anything and and I don't really talk about his death with my family because I'm not I'm not that kind of a person I I don't talk about you know, that kind of thing with family. I guess maybe I should. I have with my mother a little bit when she's been here on the telephone because she, uh, when he passed away, she found him and that was very um, painful for her. And so she has, I think, a little bit of PTSD um, about those moments when she found him. And so I think that um, it's always good to sometimes talk about those things. I think if you can get them out, get them on the table, hash through them to some degree, and then I don't know that things will be 100% better, but I think they do get better with time um, and the easier it becomes to deal with um, as time goes by. So at least I hope anyway, because I'm, I'm done <laughs> feeling so sad. But anyway, back to today, it's, it's just been a very, um, not a painful day, but just one that, um, I'm very thankful to be alive. I'm very thankful I have my children. I'm very thankful that my brother was a part of my life, that he was my brother and not somebody else's brother. I'm very thankful that I have my family and my friends and the people who have been there for me to help me get through, um, all of this. You know, the time in the last year that that I've spent, you know, in mourning. And so today I wanted to be a positive thing, a happy day. Uh, you know, when I was home by myself, my husband was at work. My kids all went home yesterday. And uh, my niece and her family went back home. And I just felt like today was a good day. I scrapbooked for part of the day. I watched silly YouTube videos for part of the day. And just was. I didn't put myself under any constraints today. Um, you know, and I just spent a lot of time in prayer. And so today has been a good day. And I'll just leave it at that. Back to my scrapbooking. So I've, I've spent a lot of time today looking through pictures and finding pictures of my grandkids and ones that I want to scrapbook and ones that, you know, I really want to stand out as being you know, because they're important to me. And like, you know, maybe my grandson sleeping in is not, you know, something that is hugely important, but it's a memory. I want him to be able to look back into the scrapbook and see, oh, wow, you know, this is me and this is what I was doing. And, you know, my, my grandmother thought it was important enough that she wanted to capture the moment. You know, for starters, it's, you know, near impossible to get the kid in a photograph where he's smiling and these were smiling photos so <laughs> caught him a little bit off guard and I you know that is what I was thinking when 
I got these out, that's going to be the title of my layout is Caught Off Guard um, because he never smiles and it makes me nuts. So, I mean, I really have to work to get a smile out of this kid in a, in a picture. And I don't always grab my ruler out to lay my photos down, but for some reason today I feel, I guess because this background paper is uh, crooked, I, I need to have it, the pictures lined up straight, you know, and have even spaces in them. This piece that I threw down here, um, that is, uh, I had made a background piece for another layout that used all the border strips or branding strips. Um, and I don't even have any left. That's one that I cut off of another sheet. So anyway, I used it and I cut that piece off and I thought it was just way cool so I didn't throw it. And so I kept it there. And so there you go. All right, so there's the base of the layout. Now for me comes the really, really fun part, the embellishment part. Now I wanna put the title down or pull my title out first and, and um, decide what I'm going to do with that. And like I said, I, I was thinking about it when I pulled these photos out that I want to call it caught off guard. But I don't know if I have the right letter stickers with this kit. Well, there's a bunch in this one that I haven't even used yet. Oh, there's a stencil that I pulled to go with this kit. So let's see. I hope I do. These are letter stickers. Oh, that makes me a little bit nutty when they have those tiny little bits in them. Okay. So, I've been watching silly videos today. Uh, Katie Scott, that's a chief has been uh, moving a lot of her videos over from, I guess, Ustream, which I don't even know what that is, um, to YouTube. And so <laughs> she has some majorly silly videos. I mean, sometimes just listening to her as I scrapbook, I mean, I just crack up laughing because, you know, what she says touches home, probably. Um, but she's a little bit like me in the respect that, you know, she called herself on one of the videos that I watched today, an introverted extrovert and I feel like that is so me I when I'm out and about with people I feel like I'm okay um, that there's you know I I don't mind being around people but I like to have my private time I like to be home um, I like to not have um, I just like to be home. I don't necessarily like to be around bunches and bunches of people all the time. And so, um, when I was younger, all I wanted to do was go out and about and, you know, hang out with people and see friends and, and so that's not who I am any longer and so that's, I really felt like that right immediately caught me, you know, I mean, um, that she said it exactly right. I really wanted to use this alphabet, but I don't have any Fs. Let's see, G, U, A, no Rs either. I could probably fake an R out of a P, but I don't know that I could fake an F. Oh, maybe if I made it, but I don't want to fake it. Those are too shiny. That's not really the right shade of blue that I want. What about this greenish tint? Not really. Sometimes this is, for me, the hardest part. That yellow might work with that yellow. And I have two little sheets of these. And so I wonder, does anybody else put their um, letter stickers onto rulers before they put them down on layouts? I've tried the uh, wax paper, and I still do that on occasion. But this tends to really work well for me. 
every so often I have to um, use a little bit of Goo Gone on my ruler to get all the goopiness off of it for multiple layers of stickers. I know uh, Melissa Stinson, the Scrappy Jedi, I know she does it a lot, um, and I just caught up the other day, you know, I've been in grad school for the last couple of years, and so I really haven't, my scrapbooking has been based on, um, like, time off from school, and so I was watching, catching up on her blog the other day, and she put a notice up there that she is, um, going to stop blogging, which really, you know, breaks my heart. She was probably one of the first blogs that I started following. But, you know, I get it. Her husband's in grad school and, and uh, fixing to go to medical school, and she really does have a lot on her plate. She started a new business with her laser cuts and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I get it. I get it that she's extremely busy and life moves past just being, you know, a scrapbooker committed to uh, making pages for my personal pleasure, <laughs> my watching pleasure, but, you know, I like to watch her anyway. So just thought I would throw that out there. Um, again, I'm usually not very OCD about how my titles lay down. But because that has a wonky background, I just feel like I need to um, have it where I want it. How about off guard? No, I think I would rather have it right there. Or right there. Right there it is. Just a little closer. Okay. Caught off guard. Ooh, I should put his name. Cameron caught off guard. I wonder if I have another. Uh, ooh, that's the perfect one too. How about in the green? Photo op. I like that. So this is pretty much my process. I just start layering up things and um, I usually start with my background and I move forward from there. Um, paper typically always comes first for me. Once I have the paper, um, I kind of sort of move on to like uh, the title. Once I get the title down, then I start looking at um, where I want all of my other embellishments to go. Uh, and I start with the bigger paper pieces, like if I were going to use any Project Life cards or um, anything like that, I would pull that out to use it. I don't want to use those. Ooh, this one. I like this one. Um, I would be pulling out, you know, uh, project life cards or big paper scraps or whatever to fill in spaces but I don't feel like I really have to do that with this layout I feel like it's pretty um, it's a pretty simple layout no M's no N's C A M an E. There's a C, but I'll make it an E. I will uh, Frankenstein it. C-A-M-E R O And I'm okay with mixing my fonts most days. I would have preferred to have all the same length, but I really wanted this color. Let me get my smaller stickers, too. I'm going to use this X. Oops.
Sometimes this is the most difficult part about um, working with letter stickers. And you know, I keep telling myself, I'm not going to buy any more. I'm not going to buy any more. I'm just going to use my quick cut styles and make my alphabets that way. But then I see some and I just can't resist. Especially when they're on like a fabulous cell or something. Cameron, caught off guard. Okay, so then um, the photo or the sketch has washi tape going down the side, which I kind of like this green going down the side. I really think it should go under these. I'll just layer it up. I'm really liking how this is coming together. Okay, so then it's got some speckledies down here and a half circle down here. And I just don't know. I could use some of those. Just kind of rifling through my stickers to see if there's anything on these sticker sheets that I want to use. And I'm not really seeing much. I could do this one. I think I will. Let's see. I think I have enough ink left on that. And I think I'm going to pop this up. Get a few little foam squares here. I'm not usually very chatty when I'm scrapbooking, so I apologize. I think I might get better with this as time goes by, but it's just going to take a little bit of time um, to get there. But I love, love, love watching process videos, and I've wanted to make my own forever. And so this is really, really fun for me, even if it's not for you guys. Um, and I should put on there, I've got one of these things that says location. I should put in there somewhere in Texas. Okay, I don't really see anything on that one. Perfect moment. I like that as well. I'm going to use some more pop dots. I kind of have this thing with pop dots. If I'm going to pop one thing, then it has to be three. You know that rule of threes. It can't just be one thing popped up in the air. It has to be three. And so I feel like... Um, so I feel like I need to have something like over here or here um, popped up as well. And so I'm just looking around. There's all kinds of bitty little stickers on here that I'm thinking that um, might work. Let me look and see what else I have. This one has some bitty stickers, but and this was early in the morning, but this is kind of a pinkish. I 
nothing go pop and snap. Oh, I should have inked that other one too. And I'm using a close to my heart ink and it's called um, Whisper. And this new um, Ranger inking tool, the round one. Um, I have to tell you, I like it much better than I like the uh, square one. Although I do still have my square one, I don't foresee me getting rid of it. I think that's good for that one. Just looking back through my... Um, oh, wouldn't that be cute to do a little rub-on journal spot right down there. Although the sketch doesn't have it on it, but I guess I could put it on there. It doesn't really matter, does it? It's all about me. Lucky in love. Discover your passion. Tickle pink. Pretty in pink and beauty. All about me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think any of those will work. I have these. These are white. I like to be with you. Delight. I don't think... Bloom where you're planted. I don't think any of those will go either. Good things come in small packages. You are my favorite friend. Oh, I love that. Oh, and that little ducky on there. I have not bought any rub-ons in forever and I'm determined to use up what I have because I just really am not uh, keen on rub-ons. I think it's just a personal thing. Some of my rub-ons have been absolutely fabulous and some of them not so much. See what I mean? You would think it would just stick down there. Oh, Cracker Jacks. This is not going to be one of my favorite ones. I can already tell. I wish it said you are my favorite grandson because, well, I only have one. <laughs> that would be easy. A little bit more difficult for the granddaughters since I have three. Not entirely happy with how that came out, but, you know... I mean, sometimes it is what it is, and I think that's kind of how that is. You know, I got all these canvas shapes. There were two packages of them, and I've yet to use one of them. Let's see. This came with those one borders. So what I think I will do, I think I need a little bit more ink. Oops. 
it's not like you can see the uh, edging on that, but it did give me a uh, opportunity to take off the white edge. Still rifling through my embellishments. That would be cute, but I don't really think it's the right one for there. Although I do like it up there. So I think that, whoops. I tore that off. I think it's going to go right up there. Tuck it behind there. And this to go. Let me just clip that off a little bit. Make it line back up. Try not to be too overly fussy with embellishments. Especially stickers, you know. I mean, stickers have come in and out for uh, scrapbookers for a long time. I have always loved stickers. Always. They have always been a part of every um, everything that I've ever done with scrapbooking. I've always had stickers going on because I love them. And I don't think I'm ever going to give up my stickers. There's a lot of people who do give up using stickers and I'm okay with that, but yeah, not me. Just going to have it peeping out on that side. And then, I really don't want to use a flower on that, but I don't mind using another circle embellishment. Let me just ink this for up here. I know I didn't ink the one down here, but that's okay because it's so low on the page. I don't think it's going to matter as much as if I have this... Um, And so then, when I'm at this point, and I'm looking at my stickers, and I'm thinking to myself, what else can I add, what else can I add, what else can I add, I just kind of grab out some stuff, like these old Heidi Grace um, stickers, and they're chipboard stickers, and um, I'm just adding them here and there, and I've kind of used little bits and pieces of them already. And so now I'm to the point where I'm at my smaller, or small-ish embellishments. And so I'm just randomly going through what I have in here. And I don't think I have these acetate frames, but I don't really think that they're appropriate for anything. I'm going to do with this is a majorly huge pain in the butt I think but give me the angle that I need to cut that, right? At least I hope so anyway.
I get all these really wild hairs and I think that I have to do this, that, or the other. And so then I do these things and sometimes I think, what were you thinking? It's kind of where I'm at right now. What were you thinking? the center of that acetate piece out and just have this bit of a frame and so I need my tiny tiny little glue dots well maybe if I can catch it That one is a little bit short on that side, so let me lift this bit up right here. Oh, oh, that's the one that must have caught on my finger. What I'm gonna do is move that down and around just a skosh, and move that down just a skosh. got dinner on the stove cooking and well I just burned it up so turn that off really quickly and I come back and finish my page <laughs> oh my husband will be home from work in just a few minutes and yeah I go oh what's that smell me being a silly woman I don't think I have anything in here that I want to use been trying to pull that out and use it. Nothing laying in there. And so I'm looking in my tray here that I have of just random stuff. I have washi tape ribbon. These are um, brads that I had on other brad pieces that um, I have left. I have cut apart. I have embellishments that I've made. I've got bling. I've got wood embellishments, metal embellishments, um, all kinds of stuff on here. And so that's just what I keep it all on. And I think I've got some of these left that I'm going to use up. Maybe down there, and then this one. Oh, nope, I don't want to use that same striped one. Use this polka dot one right there, maybe. And that one there. Well, there it is. I'm going to say, if I can find my paper piercing tool, I could these are big enough that I could um, probably um, just break off the little metal pieces and put some pop dots on the back, but yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna fish them right down in through the paper.
And yes, I did poke a hole right in that picture. You know, anymore with digital prints being so accessible, you know, it really doesn't hurt my feelings to poke holes in them and then tear them or do whatever, chop them up and then um, go back and print new ones out. Now let me see, I have some random bits of like that, acetate, but I used that one there, the smaller one. I guess I could use this bigger one, like right beside that. Not that you could see it, but I'd fix it where you could. I've got some photo corners and some little round dots. Um, yeah. And then this is all of my tiny little embellishments that I have with my kit this time. And this is basically what I have left. I love these stars. I only have two of them in here. But I could do it. I don't really want to put that behind there. I just want to leave those. Put one here. And then the other one right here. I think that's good. Now I'm going to get my tiny little blue dots again. And I think these, sometimes I use that, um, it is a uh, glue that holds down, multi-purpose glue, but I find on photos I still like if I'm going to put the element on the photos themselves, I like, um, the sticky dots better. There, I picked up another one off the page and onto my finger to lose it someplace in there. I'm pretty bad about doing that. Don't ask me how, but I am. Oh, let me get another bitty blue dot because I'm gonna use that acetate right there where I had it. Put one there, one there, and one there. I don't think I can use any of this stuff. I thought I had another shorter piece of Oh, I do. Here's the blue one. Do I want that? No, I don't think so. Do I want it in this darker color? No. I think that's good. I think that's my layout. Cameron caught off guard and I used this sketch from Let's Get Sketchy um, and I'm also going to use it in the two piece in a bucket. They're doing a layout challenge, uh, layout a day for May that one of the other um, two piece users, she's a She's a member there. She's not a garden girl or anything and it's not a uh, one of their um, challenges. It's just a, a personal one. And so um, she's got this going on and so I printed off. I've been trying to keep up with them but yeah some of those challenges just don't work for me. So what I've done actually is um, I've gone back and pulled a few of them up and so for the 17th of May the challenge was oh well, I can't use it for that because I originally thought of spring cleaning underway. That's what that one was going to be. And so I was going to use these photos, but they don't really work with the sketch that I pulled. So I can't really use that one. So I'll have to look through and see if um, I have any others that that one will fit. It probably would have fit for a 30-minute one, but I'll look through and time it. Um, probably it won't even work for that one. 
Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my layout process here. I'm sorry if I just kind of rattled on, but thanks for sticking around for my very first uh, process video. Anyway, I'll see you later, YouTube. Bye-bye.